So we're finally leaving Loikor. Uh, we couldn't face us another 16 hour bus journey. So we decided to fly. And this is the airport. It's, that's it, that's it. That, it's kind of really, really tiny. And uh, this is the security. A little x-ray checker. It is a tiny airport. It's very small. <laughs> It's a baby plane. And one hour's flight on a baby plane is far better than 16 hours of the bus. <laughs> In the event of a crash, it's really too late to do anything about it. So sit back and relax and know that at least you died in an interesting way. I've been waiting to do this video update uh, until after we left Myanmar. Uh, obviously, because the uh, apparently the government uh, check some things you submit and some of the things I wanted to say. Uh, but it wouldn't go down well. Um, they're trying to promote tourism and I'm not sure they want to hear what I have to say. On the night of the Act Festival, uh, it wasn't really what I was envisaging. It was, uh, it was more like a fair. It was like Loikor's answer uh, to Goose Fair in Nottingham, but very primitive. When we were walking through uh, the crowd uh, to try and find something to, to eat, uh, Mid got sexually assaulted, and obviously this is very traumatic for her. Following from that, we decided to find somewhere quiet and sit down. Uh, give it time to kind of get over it. And as soon as we plonked ourselves down, two guys plonked themselves at our table, uh, and one made eye contact with me. Uh, and started smiling at me in a really quite unnerving way and said that uh, I was very, very handsome. And he, he introduced his friend, he said, this is my friend, uh, my, my, my friend Islamist, my friend IS. Uh, I had no idea what he was saying. I assumed he was just telling us what his friend's religion was, which is, I don't understand why anyone would want to do that, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but anyway, I shook this guy's hand. Uh, later when we got back to the uh, guest house, uh, mid research on the internet, uh, apparently, uh, IS stands for Islamist State, um, which apparently is the um, Loikor uh, branch of Aikida. So we um, <laughs> might, might have been talking to terrorists. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. It, it was a kind of bit scary since uh, he was kind of asking for our address and where we live and stuff. And um, after I found that information out, I spent the time wondering uh, whether, you know, they were kind of like um, vetting us, whether we would make good uh, kidnapping targets or not, or maybe I was just being paranoid. So anyway, that kind of freaked me out because he kept on telling me how young I looked and accidentally uh, touching my knee with his knee and stuff like that. So I said I wanted to leave and maybe go and find somewhere uh, more quiet. So we left. and. Um, I thought, well, let's go somewhere else uh, and have a drink and try and relax and have some time alone. So we sat down somewhere else. And then another guy came on, a kind of 60-year-old uh, uh, Muay Thai fighter, retired. I think he came second in the 25th anniversary festival. And um, he was very, very nice to us, especially mid. Uh, he, he bought us a drink, he bought us some food, It's very smiley, very talkative. And then he said to Mid, here, have this as a gift. This is, this is a, a ring that was passed to me by my mother through her grandmother and it means so much to me. Uh, but I want to give it to you as a gift. And Mid said, oh, oh, thank you, thank you. And it was, it was lovely, it was very, very nice, very sweet. And I felt that maybe, you know, uh, it'd be nice to maybe give him a gift as well. So I, I'm wearing, this ring uh, is a pretend wedding ring, the idea being that mid gets less hassle from men, it's not working. Um, my mum was very, very misogynist uh, and mid basically has been treated like, I don't know, an object pretty much. So I, I gave him my ring as a, as a gift and, it, and he looked at it and walked away. Uh, came back and gave me back. Um, I was happy to have it back. 
And then for the next half an hour, he was sort of gazing into Mid's eyes and, and talking to him and being very, very friendly. And I think we both started to wonder what the giving of the ring meant. Uh, and I started to get a little bit scared. Uh, and people were coming over to the table and he kept on telling them about how he'd given her this ring. And I suddenly thought, what is the cultural significance of giving a family, family heirloom to a, a young, pretty white girl? Uh, but in the end, you know, seeing that he kept on looking at the white patch on his hand where he'd had this ring his whole life and it was suddenly missing and he seemed upset, uh, Mid decided to give the ring back. So we're unsure of whether it's just a perfectly innocent gesture that he was being really, really friendly and nice, or whether it meant something more dark and more scary. After that incident, we ran, literally ran out of the fair. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a scary place. It was so horrible for me. It was really horrible, really horrible. Basically, in Loiko, there, there, was, there was nothing to eat, nothing at all. Uh, everything was covered in oil. Um, you know, the chicken contained chicken heads and chicken claws, and had been sat in the sun all day. And there was noodles, but the noodles were covered in oil. Uh, there was very, very small amount of fruit available, and. In the end, you know, I developed an aversion to eating. Every time I ate, I felt sick. So then I just learned to stop eating. And I think, you know, I was, for two weeks, all I was eating was like a piece of fruit and a bowl of noodles each day. And uh, I just stopped getting an appetite. I just stopped eating. I just gave up on eating. And I got used to it. Uh, I think I probably lost about a stone, maybe. But the, the problem, the problem's been, it's, it's made me very, very ill. Uh, when we uh, finally managed to leave Loikor and we got to Yangon, we managed to find a pizza place and we thought we'd celebrate leaving somewhere that was so unsafe by going and having a nice meal. Uh, and I ordered a huge pizza and wolfed it down and I was so ill. It was like my body rejected it uh, as if it was poison. Uh, basically, I effectively got food poisoning, but I don't actually think there was anything wrong with it. The piece, I think my body was just rejecting everything, and I got, um, um, really, really, really bad diarrhea, and I was vomiting all night, uh, and I got, I got a fever, and I got chills, I was shivering and shaking, my muscles were aching. As, you know, we, we needed to get out of Loiko, we hadn't booked on any onward accommodation, hadn't booked an onward flight to Cambodia. I was sitting there in the guest house with a bucket between my legs, vomiting and typing on the internet at the same time, trying to book stuff. It was, it was so awful. This travelling thing, you know, there's good times, but there's really bad times as well. So now we're at uh, Siem Reap in Cambodia, and we've got a chance to get healthy again. There's a... Uh, Nice, nice proper food and there's available healthcare should we need it. So rather than rushing off to have a look at Angkor Wat, we're, we're taking it easy, we're, we're catching up on our sleep, we're trying to eat healthily and hopefully we won't get ill again because we've been ill far too many times on this trip.